Hello, options traders. Welcome, everyone, and a very special welcome to a huge group who just joined this morning. We appreciate all the support, and it's great having you here. And so I thought this would be a really good time to do a rehash of what you might call the philosophy that I use here in this trading group. And it's important to know because you're going to hear a lot of people who tout trading services or saying that I can beat the market because of this, that, or the other, or some trading indicator, and they all try to beat the markets. And I just want to show you a convincing, or perhaps the convincing formula, why that can't be done. And so what I have learned to do and what I teach people is that it's better to hedge your positions. And when you hedge, you can roll into cash and synthetically buy puts for the downside and use those buying opportunities, which is what we have in today's markets. They are far more buying opportunities than they are selling opportunities. And yet many of you are finding out, unfortunately, the hard way that when you trade and try to guess where the market is going, it just doesn't work. It just takes one day for things to blow up. Now, these philosophies that I use aren't just because I think that's the way it should be. It comes from years of trading. It comes from trading on the most active trader options team. We cleared more volume than any other firm on Wall Street at the time. I've also taught at the university level. So there's a lot of different experiences that go into trying to show traders why it's not a good idea to try to beat the market by guessing. So let's take a look at what this formula is. So let's say that we have our market here and let's divide it up into two different camps. We have passive traders on one side. These are people who say, I don't think I can beat the markets or I don't have the time. I'm just going to throw it into the S&P 500. On the other side, we have active traders. These are the people who are in and out of trades, trying to predict the tops and the bottoms, trying to pick up the nickels in front of bulldozers, as it's often called. But we have passive and active. Those are really the only two basic camps you can fall into. Now let's pick some numbers, and it doesn't really matter which numbers we use. So let's just say that 30% are passive, and therefore 70% are active. So what does this mean for our market? Well, let's just say that the market returns 10% as measured by the S&P at the end of the year. Once again, it doesn't even matter what numbers you want to use. If you want to choose 12%, feel free to do so. You want to use minus 5%, fine, pick a number. But the market overall has to return something at the end of the year. Once we have that number, we know that 30% of our passive traders must also earn the same 10% because they're trading the S&P 500. But what does that mean for the remaining 70%? What must they receive? Now, this is where if you talk to these traders, they'll say, yeah, of course we beat the markets. We use RSI, or we use stochastics, or we use MACD, and we're going to teach you how to do this, which I always find interesting how you're going to expect to beat the averages by doing what the average person is doing. But that's what they all believe. Or they say, oh, you don't understand. We watch it really closely. Your eyes have nothing to do with the markets. So what do active traders actually earn? Well, it turns out they must also earn 10%. Why? Well, think about it. If the market is made up of 100% of investors and the market returns 10%, then all investors on average must earn that amount. If you don't like those numbers that I used, fine. If you wanna say that 70% are passive and therefore 30% are active, numbers still have to add up. If you want to say that 90% are passive and therefore 10% are active, you still gotta add up to 100%. And that means the only return that the active traders can receive on average is the market return. Now, what implications does this have for our market? Well, we've got buyers and sellers. Every buyer must have a seller. That's another indisputable mathematical fact. And therefore, half of these people will win and half will lose. Now, another indisputable fact is that they cannot be right 100% of the time. So on average, they're going to go back and forth, winning about half the time, losing about half the time, and therefore just spinning their wheels, doing a lot of extra work and a lot of extra commissions to return what everybody else gets in the market for doing nothing. So this is why it is not a good idea to try to be in and out of positions and try to predict the markets. Can some people do it? Well, some people will do it just by chance, 
but they can't consistently do it. So just because you find one trader or read about them in the news who happens to turn $100,000 into $5 million doesn't mean they have the secret formula. Somebody's going to do it. But the trick is they cannot do it all of the time. And yet that's what they try to make you believe. So when you're in this group, what I'm going to show you how to do is to hedge your positions. And again, that means we can hedge, roll, morph. We can let gamma come to our rescue when markets are falling. We can then take that cash that we've banked and synthetically used to buy put and capitalize on the downturns rather than running and taking big losses. So I hope that helps everyone to understand a little bit more of the philosophy that I use to trade options. And that's what I want to share with everyone in this group. For anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find the link in the description below.